In the past few videos, I've described the difference between investments and speculations and described how investments should create value by delivering products or services. Most of the air in crypto discussions is consumed by price and get-rich-quick schemes, but there is a subset of the crypto world that claims to be different. They are creating services with the intent to sell them to customers and earn income by using tokens to facilitate and incentivize the ecosystem. They call themselves Web3. There are way too many projects to make a definitive general statement about the legitimacy of all these projects, but let's dig a bit deeper into the economics of one specific project and see if it lives up to the hype. The Graph Network is an indexing protocol for querying data from other networks. Basically, it will pull data from databases stored elsewhere and build APIs for developers to access that data more quickly. They have a token called GRT. In the GRT ecosystem, there are four types of players. The consumer, who I will call the customer. The indexer, who I will call the service provider. The curator, who I will call the employee. And the delegator, who I will call the investor. Customers are people who use the service. They pay in GRT every time they query the database. Service providers own servers. They run the indexing software and make the APIs available to customers. They earn GRT whenever a customer queries their database. The employee is any individual who wants to trade their labor for rewards. In this ecosystem, they build the APIs. They find useful data that should be indexed and signal to service providers which APIs they should choose to make available to customers. The APIs pull data from blockchains like Ethereum, IPFS, or other public sources, and they earn GRT whenever the customer uses one of the APIs they signaled. The investor is any individual who wants to trade capital for rewards. They bring money to help fund the creation of new service providers. Every time a customer uses an API from a service provider they help to fund, they earn GRT. Okay, so far this sounds pretty good, but let's dig a bit deeper. Now, I'm not going to spend any time discussing the merits of the project itself. I'm not going to discuss the advantages or disadvantages of using this service relative to other similar services or doing it all yourself with your own servers. The point of this video is just to describe the economics of the ecosystem. Technically, it may be a great solution or a terrible one. I'm not sharing an opinion on that topic either way. First, let's talk about the customers. If someone decides this service is worth money and they are willing to pay to use it, great. Next, let's talk about the service providers. They have resources, and this protocol gives them the ability to use them to generate income by delivering a service. Great. Now here's where it gets a bit tricky. First, an analogy. People often claim that dollars have no value because they aren't backed by anything. They are mostly just bits in computers created by banks. That is mostly true, but there will always be demand for dollars because the government requires them for taxation. It doesn't matter which currency you use in commerce or even in which currency you earn income. Taxes are paid in dollars, which means there will always be someone out there looking to buy them. In this project, they created a similar dynamic by requiring service providers to have at least 100,000 GRT in order to operate a node. At current prices of about $1 per token, that's not a small amount of money that must be committed before you can even get started. So some service providers may need help raising the funds necessary to join the network. But service providers are also compensated with rewards based on the percentage of total funds allocated to an API that they staked. So they have an incentive to attract investment even if they don't use the funds for anything productive. More investment doesn't mean more or better APIs. All it means is the more investment you attract, the bigger piece of the pie you take. From an incentive standpoint, this scheme creates artificial demand for GRT tokens and locks them up so they can't be sold. So I understand the effect is to support the token price, 
But from an economic standpoint, that's a bizarre and wasteful way to allocate investments. That's a red flag. Let's talk about the investors. Investors provide essentially what amounts to startup capital to get a service provider on the network. Then they take a portion of their earnings. But unlike in the traditional world where a VC would get a share of the business in exchange for their capital, in this world, they get a share of the revenue. Without an ownership stake, this feels similar to just lending money like a bank. But instead of earning predictable interest, they earn unpredictable fees. Because if nobody uses the service, they don't get any fees. And shockingly, the service provider can unilaterally change the terms of the revenue share agreement or cancel it altogether, even after the investors have committed their capital. I can't imagine investors accepting that in the real world. As an investor, you are taking a risk by trusting an often anonymous service provider to be responsible. You are trusting they won't change the parameters of your agreement, and they will allocate your stake to APIs that customers will actually use. There may be a role for investors in this ecosystem, but it could be quite limited and risky. You can't just decide to invest 100 million GRT if there's nowhere safe to deploy it. It's not much better for the employees. They may provide a valuable service by finding signal in a vast wasteland of noisy data. But if the APIs they signal aren't picked up by service providers, they make nothing. If they start to become popular, there's nothing stopping another employee from copying them. They have no moat around the service. There's no patent or intellectual property. Also, the actual mechanism by which they signal an API should be staked by a service provider is complicated by a bonding curve, which essentially means they can buy and sell shares in the API itself. The price of the API's shares increase when other employees signal the API and decrease when other employees unsignal, which means it is possible for an employee to actually lose money if they signal an API that subsequently loses favor. And the earlier they buy shares in a particular API, the higher their return. Why did they add this pyramid-like dynamic? It feels weird and raises another red flag. The system is also filled with fees. When you buy or sell a share of an API, you pay ETH gas, and you are even charged a fee if the developer upgrades the API version and your signal auto-migrates to the latest. How can you know how often an API will be updated? This seems very risky and unpredictable. At the end of the day, I would be concerned that, again, even though there are technically mechanisms to earn income from customers, not just speculation, it might be so small that it amounts to what I would consider just a response to an argument. Somebody told the creators of GRT that tokens need investors and investors should earn income. So they concocted a model to attract investors and give them income, even if in reality the investor capital is not needed or beneficial. It allows the creators to say they aren't a Ponzi scheme without being materially different in a practical sense. The majority of investors will need to get the majority of their returns from increasing token or API share prices, not income. And if the price of the token goes up, how does that affect customers? Customers don't want prices to go up. How quickly do API fees adjust? If not quickly enough, Customers will need to set up sophisticated hedging programs to have predictable costs. Then there's this gem. Most of the income earned by service providers and investors actually comes from inflation, not fees. Going back to the points I made in earlier videos, you can't create wealth by printing money. If the rewards are not coming directly from customer fees and only from customer fees, if the rewards given to service providers and investors exceed customer fees, there are games being played to extract more money from the system than is being deposited. Some of the rewards that old investors earn must be coming from new investors. In 2008, everyone complained about math and programming savants, or quants, being sent to Wall Street to engage in creative financial engineering. Then we had the greatest financial collapse since the 1930s. It seems 
Many of these types have finally found their way to Silicon Valley, but rather than spending their time building new services that solve new problems, they are redeploying the financial engineering skills they learned on Wall Street to resolve existing solutions with complicated pyramid like incentive schemes. There was something ironic about service providers using Google Cloud to provide services that Google already offers. And if they are able to offer the same services even cheaper than the company that owns the servers, that raises all kinds of red flags. It feels like the network is using investors to subsidize the services and promising them returns from freshly minted tokens they are creating out of thin air. This whole thing has a very CDO like feel to it. Instead of wrapping toxic mortgages in AAA financial instruments, they are wrapping good enough solutions in Ponzi token instruments. It's not clear how this is all going to play out. But it feels like the entire model is designed to find a way to justify the existence of a token, rather than to find a way to deliver value by solving a new technical problem. The only benefit that is created by compensating people with a new currency appears to be obfuscating the flow of funds in the system. If it's too complicated for people to understand, they will ask less questions. CDOs all over again. It's almost shocking to think about all the time spent designing and building this network and what could have been done instead that would actually be materially different and better for customers. Because isn't that the whole point of offering a service to satisfy customers? Instead of focusing on the customer, they are focusing on the investor, and customers with actual budgets measured in real money may not be too excited about that. But I guess we'll see.